Welcome everyone to this channel. I would like to show you the first video uh, in which I will uh, show and explain to you the game I played around a month ago. So let's dive in and I will explain uh, my ideas that I used in this game. So first of all I played pawn to d4 and my opponent played pawn to e6 which is a very flexible move since it allows both to play f5 or d5 or knight to f6. I, my next move was a little bit committal because I played bishop to f4 which signalizes the London system and uh, it shows it, my opponent what my intentions are and it shows that my intentions are pawn to e3, knight to f3, knight d2 and pawn c3. Uh, this is and bishop d3. This is a very flexible setup uh, that uh, many players enjoy and uh, well I will explain to you uh, this system uh, when it reaches the board. Knight f6, e3, c5 attacking my center, c3 is aimed to reinforce it, knight c6, knight f3, bishop e7, knight bd2, castles, bishop d3, c takes d4, e takes d4, and pawn to d5. And this is um, very, uh, very much a main line. Uh, the only thing which was not very common is this exchange on d5 which was probably aimed to um, get my pawn to do not defend this bishop on f4, which he will then probably try to attack with bishop to d6. However, I didn't really bother with it, and I played pawn to h4, simply preparing to push it forward and attack, also maybe to push g4 and g5 and then at launch the attack this way. He played bishop d6, uh, he really wants to exchange these bishops, however I played knight f3, knight e5, sorry, and uh, kind of blocked that possibility. This is also a typical move in the London system. He decided to take it, of course he has to take with a bishop, he cannot take with a knight, because I take with a pawn with a fork. So he took with a bishop, now I took with a pawn and he retreated with a knight to d7. After which I played queen to h5, threatening the pawn on h7, threatening checkmate. He played pawn to f5, prevented the checkmate, and um, playing e takes f6 doesn't really make sense, since he would just recapture with a knight and attack my queen and defend against checkmate. So I didn't capture on Poisson, I just moved my knight to f3, defending the pawn. Now what he should have played in here what was was something like uh, knight c5, attacking my bishop and trying maybe to come into this e4 square. However, he decided to play queen to e8. He knows that I am attacking, so he wants to swap the most powerful pieces off the board so that my attack is not so dangerous. I, of course, avoided it, moved to uh, g5, and uh, he attacked my queen with h6. I moved back to g3, and queen to h5, this is aimed to defend the h6 pawn. Because, if we go back one move, if he played some stupid move here, like a6, then I would just take on h6, the pawn cannot be recaptured because the pawn is pinned. So after I moved to g3, he played queen h5, and now I castled, simply completing my development, and uh, preparing to get this rook to the g1 square and to attack. Queen to g4, again he's trying to trade off queens, but I avoid it, queen to h1, and now he played knight c5, <clears throat> attacking the bishop and bringing the knight to e4 maybe. I put my bishop on e2, so counter-attacking the queen, uh, x-raying it actually, and if a series of bad moves by my opponent are played, like rook to e1 and b5, then simply knight to g5 would trap this queen, which has nowhere, really nowhere to go. <clears throat> of course, he retreated the queen back to g6, I attacked it with h5, and he goes to f7, which I believe is a very good move. Uh, simply, you put the queen uh, 
close to the king so that it defends. Knight h4. So trying to come into g6 and attack some of these weak squares around the king. He prevents that. Now his knight is controlling g6 as well. And now I played the move which I when I played it in the game, I thought as of it as a very good move. Because it defends the f2 pawn, so if the knight comes to e4, it is protected. However, uh, there was a better way to deal with it, and it was rook to g1, which after knight e4 would result in g4. Now my attack is really fast, and I'm still protecting the f2 pawn. However, I didn't play that. I played rook to f1, and he played pawn to b6, which is a good move. It aims to develop the bishop to either one of these squares. And now I play pawn to f3. On one hand, I'm preventing the knight from coming to e4. And on the other hand, I'm also preparing pawn to g4. And to, I'm threatening to start this big onslaught on his king. Now he played a move which I believe lost him the game. He didn't really bother himself with defending against the attack. And he just developed the bishop. And he made the he took the right piece, but he didn't really move made the, make the best move. And the best move was bishop to a6, and uh, you will see that in a moment, because bishop to a6 oh sorry uh, would actually force me at some point to take the bishop. He would capture back, and if now I'm trying to launch the attack with g4, he would take, take, and say retreat the knight back to c5. And then if I play g5, trying to go uh, further with my attack, he would simply capture on h5 and stand very well. This would not be possible if my bishop was still here, because the pawn would be defended. So um, because of that, he played bishop... To, so uh, because of the fact that he played bishop to b7, I was able to play rook to g1 and simply go on with my attack. He went with a rook to the d8 square, uh, supporting this pawn because this is his m big idea now that he will try to take advantage of the fact that this pawn can be advanced and can very, be very strong um, alongside with the rook taking control of the d-file but I didn't really try to defend against that I assumed that my attack is more dangerous and I played pawn g4 now uh, probably the best move here would be king to h7 simply sidestepping any threats with g5 and opening up the g file but he didn't play that he played d4 he went ahead with his idea so on one hand he's opening the bishop and on the other he's preparing to push the pawn even forward, further now if i tried to prevent that and take the pawn that would not be great he would take on d4 with a threat with a well not a threat to take the bishop but some significant danger uh, could be created, for example, rook to c8, some knight discoveries. These are not good. So I played pawn to g5, which is an extremely attacking move. Now, he can no longer play queen to h king to h7 because of the fork. And uh, there is a threat of taking on h6. So what he concluded is that if he simply takes on g5 and I take back, nothing bad happens. However, he was wrong. Uh, this knight is now pinned to the rook. Uh, and it's a great problem, because he cannot move it. You'll see in a moment. First, he played d3, attacking my bishop. I moved my bishop back. And he played d2, check. Now, if I wanted, I could take this. But it's not the best way, because he would then take on h5, and my attack would not be so strong anymore. Instead, I decided to simply move my king. And the problem is that I'm threatening to take this knight and to go with knight to g6, basically attacking the two squares here where the, his pieces are going to be. But he didn't know how to work against it, so he moved rook to c8. And I just took the knight and won the exchange. However, uh, there was a better move here that I didn't see during the game. I saw it afterwards when I analyzed it with my supervisor and the engine uh, when I played h6. Uh, it should be played h6 because now 
I'm exerting pressure on g7, and this tactic can still be played. So it's somewhat better to play this h6 move. However, I decided to simply take and win the exchange. And here I took the rook, and he took back with a queen. And now the beautiful finish of the attack, pawn to h6. Again, this motif of the pawn not being able to move because of the pin. He defended his pawn with the rook, but it's too late. I took threatening some things with queen h7. For instance, if he just, I don't know, if he moves the knight to d3. And of course, uh, queen to h8, king f7, queen f7, it's mate. And that's why after he took with a rook, I took, he took with a queen. I played rook to g1, uh, pinned his queen to the king, and it was in this position that he resigned the game. He is losing the queen. He has nothing to talk about. Um, however, some of the viewers might wonder why didn't he take with the king, because then there is no pin. However, there is, but it's hidden one. Rook to g1 check. King to f7, queen to h7 check. Now if the queen goes to g7, thank you, that's a queen. And if the king goes to e8, simply rook to g8, again pins the queen to the king and wins it. So in conclusion, I think this was a typical London system attack that uh, all of the black players who play against d5 um, have to know about is this h4 and knight to e5 idea. Now, this uh, thing that he committed to the bishop captures on e5, which allowed me then to get rid of his knight from f6 square and simply to launch the attack afterwards. Then he tried to chase my queen, but it was not very good. And then this fantastic onslaught with f3 and g4 and g5 was decisive. So, uh, let me know what you think about this game. I think it's very interesting, very instructive one. And, well, see you in the next video.